This is Twit. This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. Your IT skills are outdated in about 18 months. Stay ahead of the curve and strengthen your IT expertise with affordable certification-based learning that will launch or advance your career. Individuals use the code TWIT30 for 30% off a standard or premium individual IT pro membership at go.acilearning.com slash twit. So I want to jump in. I'm going to continue the theme of data security, and I want to take you through a recent report put out there by Verizon. Now, the report is released each year, and it actually captures some really trendy topics for organizations to focus on. Now, this Venture B article actually distills some of the report down to a set of things that people should focus on. Essentially, what it services in the report is that attackers are actually finding new ways to exploit human vulnerabilities, such as stolen credentials, privilege misuse, human error, social engineering, and even business email compromise that's out there. Now, the report emphasizes the need for cybersecurity providers to actually enhance their identity, privilege access, and endpoint security to effectively protect their users and their customers. Now, one key finding is significant rise in pretexting attacks, which have actually doubled in just a year. Tech companies are increasingly targeted with pretexting as part of an orchestrated social engineering set of attacks. And this is where actually threat actors assume a false identity in order to gain access to sensitive information. Now, this tactic is actually aimed at manipulating their victims' goodwill and, and trust as well, often involving you know financial assistance. In fact, the median theft amount for those business email compromise scenarios has increased to $50,000. So they make quite a bit out of it. The report also highlights the challenge of insider threats as well, which account for one out of every five breaches. Insider attacks are particularly difficult to detect and prevent, making them really a nightmare for those CISOs out there. In fact, leading cybersecurity vendors are leveraging AI and machine learning to actually detect and respond to suspicious network activity and provide real-time alerts. Additionally, system intrusion basic web application attacks and social engineering continue to be a prominent attack strategy that's out there basic web applications attacks have increased underscoring the need for robust application security and zero trust access solutions now ransomware is also in there as well it remains a lucrative strategy for attackers especially industries like financial services now the medium cost per ransom incident has more than doubled in the past two years to twenty six thousand dollars Ransomware attacks now account for 62% of all breaches. Now, the report emphasizes the importance of prompt response to new threats. And in fact, it exemplified by the Log4j vulnerability that's out there. Exploits peaked just 17 days after the flaw was discovered, highlighting the need for organizations to actually prioritize patching. We, in fact, we just talked about a story recently at the Fortinet scenario. The report also urges organizations to reassess their cybersecurity strategy and consider the evolving nature of attacks. A comprehensive approach that addresses human factors, insider threats, and rapid attack strategies is crucial. Now, building a cybersecurity culture is, you know, it promotes vigilance and also helps resilience. And it's a constant adaption to essentially in today's threat landscape. Lots of good information in this report, so definitely check it out. But what I would like to do is get your comments, questions about it as well. So I want go ahead and post them in Discord or even ISC right now. We'll, we'll try to take them. Plus, uh, I want to see if I can maybe queue up a couple people in the Discord stage as well. And I also want to bring my guest in here as well to get his thoughts on the report. And today we have Ram, Ron Ryder. He's co-founder and CTO of Centra. Welcome to the show, Ron. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Now, you know, our entire focus of this this episode is is data security. And I wanted to start with just a couple of questions for, for you. Now, you, you. You probably had a chance to hear my summary, even read the article. What What's kind of jumped out at you from this particular report? I think the most uh, obvious thing that at least relates to data security is the uh, um, prevalence of ransomware attacks. I think this is something that's here to stay and it's just growing because it's just financially, it makes sense financially for the attackers to use ransomware attacks. Um, and it's, you know, Bitcoin making it very easy for them, for the attackers to to extort the data to the um, the, the organizations to uh, pay them back so they can have the data back. Um, and, and it's something that I think just shows how much data is at the center and at the core of, of the, the value of, you know, breaking in to an organization, right? So once you, you break in, it, 
Yeah, as you can see, the number one thing that uh, attackers do is look for the sensitive data or the data that involves business continuity, right? So that's that's really uh, the thing that jumped out the first thing. Now, the, the report actually highlights the grow, like the really the growing prominence of pretexting attacks. You know, this is where the social engineering attacks, which are uh, essentially doubled. Is this a common threat that you see organizations run into? Is just they have gaps in their processes and they're able to be um, exploited that in that way? Yeah, I, I think in terms of of, of these uh, human weaknesses, of course, it's it's something that's also growing a lot, and it's something that's not really it, it, this this type of attack is something that will is here to stay no matter what what will happen in the future, right? It's something right. that's the the human factor is always the weakest link. So no matter how much we can find data security tools or any any security tools. To avoid that, then this problem is is very uh, it's it's a, it's a problematic problem. But right. I do think that in the future, uh, actually, due to things like uh, large language models, uh, there might be some new additional novel ways to actually tackle this issue. Right, right. Yeah, I do want to. I definitely want to talk about AI, and I'm, I'm sure that we'll talk about that as well in in the central segment as well. But I did. I think it's interesting. In fact, Gumby mentioned in our chat room um, the fact that human element is the growth area of these types of attacks. And it's true. In fact, we're they were talking about a little about the pretexting uh, attacks as well as insider threats. This is essentially a big, significant challenge for organizations out there because the fact that you are we, we like to call them the rogue admin attack or the the fact that these you know people have access to this data and it's really difficult to prevent. Have you, is you, are you seeing ways that organizations are essentially protecting themselves from that type of attack? Yeah, I think, uh, first of all, it's a, it's a big problem, right? Um, because, because of, for example, things like cryptocurrency, uh, you can never actually find or disclose the attacker, even if it's an insider threat. So it, this problem will also continue to evolve. Um, so in terms of the, from what I see and from what I can think of, the only way to actually mitigate insider threats is to have um, zero trust data security, right? To proper access controls, uh, figure out where your uh, dark data, shadow data, your sensitive data is overexposed, overprivileged. If you uh, do security right and specifically data security right, then insider threats become much less of an issue. Right, right. Yeah, I think the you know it's interesting because you know these types of attacks are really hard to to uh, detect, and uh, you know obviously there are ways to do this. There's there's obviously if you're storing data in places that can be audited, where they can be audit trails uh, available for you know there there can be tools that can essentially go out and determine if somebody's accessing something that they haven't accessed for a long time, or they're essentially exporting it or downloading it. Um, so there, there are ways to, to help mitigate this and detect this essentially, but it, it means that you have to implement these solutions to get there. So that's that's the hard part. Um, and, and I'm sure that there's there's other ways to mitigate it as well, but it requires additional ex, you know, experts and additional support. Now, there was it's interesting that this, this port report also calls out the fact that ransomware is on the rise. Now, we know that that obviously you know, we've seen that. Um, in fact, it says that 62 uh, percent of all breaches that are out there are ransomware. What are, what are organizations doing to protect against that? Because that seems to be a combination of a little bit of social engineering because there's, of course, there's business email compromise that's in there. There's um, obviously exploiting other things that, you know, something on your network and being able to install something like you were saying, uh, maybe getting it onto a machine that they can then go and um, use as a starting point or as a vector to another machine that they can then go and compromise and then eventually encrypt. Um, so what are the same techniques that are for protecting against the other things are also protecting for ransomware as well? Yeah, I think um, what organizations do and you should do more uh, to, to avoid ransomware attacks is, is mostly to affect their data security uh, posture. But also, uh, that, what does that mean? So it means, uh, first of all, making sure that if someone gets your data, uh, for the sake of business continuity, you have to make sure that it's backed up and that uh, right. the attacker isn't able to actually manipulate it or, or delete it in a way that's, that the business continuity is, is uh, uh, affected. Uh, but it doesn't completely help the issue, right? Because if ransomware, even if um, a good cybersecurity expert would be able to make sure that no data is, is uh, 
uh, deleted and still, um, you know, ransomware in, in the form of, of uh, uh, data leaks, right? Of uh, people threatening to uh, to uh, leak data is also something that's uh, a huge issue. So, right. so backing up data is one thing, but it won't really help. The only thing that could actually truly help is to uh, um, mitigate the, the exposure of sensitive data. The, the the report suggests that despite you know the increased cybersecurity spending, breaches continue to be you know coming in at an alarming rate. Now I want I want to maybe get your opinion on this. What what do you think some of the key factors are contributing to that? Maybe the disconnect between investment versus essentially effectiveness. What's what's going on there? Yeah, that's a great question. I think you know, insider threats or or uh, social engineering attacks go through your uh, whole uh, security budget, right? It doesn't matter how much you put uh, your dollars on infrastructure security. Once uh, people have access, then you know that's one thing you're seeing. I, I think again with data security and that uh, and Centra things, uh, my company, right? We realize that, uh, and we're trying to change that. Uh, because putting dollars on infrastructure uh, doesn't really uh, change anything, right? So I think that's why we're seeing uh, uh, this change. Um, and I think there's not much to do other than to really understand how to mitigate uh, um, the, the, the exposure of data. It, it just doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which firewalls you buy or which uh, application security you you, uh, you try to put on SaaS security. It's it's It all comes down to locking your data up as much as you can. Makes sense. Now, I'm not sure if this is um, news, but obviously the report highlights the importance of proactive approaches to cybersecurity. So you're, the fact that you assume breach will help you uh, essentially implement preventative measures. Um, can you maybe, obviously maybe using tools like your company as well, but can you maybe provide some practical steps you've seen for organizations that they can take take to ad essentially adapt that kind of mindset and maybe even strengthen their cybersecurity defenses that are out there? Yeah, of course. Um, so the goal to minimize the, the chances of ransomware attacks and data leaks is to protect your sensitive data, the crown jewels of your company, right? So the first thing you need to do is to really understand where your sensitive data is, right? So you have to continuously and automatically discover all of your data. So actually in the cloud, it's it's uh, feasible. Uh, uh, and when you had your on-prem environments, the technology didn't really allow it to do it easily. But nowadays in cloud, you do have the APIs and the technology to actually know exactly where your sensitive data is uh, without even relying on your developers knowing uh, how to do that, right? So, so you you do need a good tool to do that. Uh, once you have full discovery of sensitive data and all matter classification, uh, then you can at least know where your sensitive data is. And then you put on top of that, you put the security context. You need to understand if the data is moving somewhere. Is it uh, uh, someone trying to copy it? Is it uh, overprivileged? Uh, is it uh, is it misconfigured in terms of the data store that's uh, um, hosting this data, right? Once you understand the security posture of the data, you can basically uh, reduce the chance of it leaking. Uh, 